among us. Wherever two or three are gathered in Christ's name, God is here among us. Come, let us worship the God of creation, the God of people, the God of community. Let us follow Jesus, for Jesus is the way. Let us worship together in faith. Let us enter into a time of prayer. Here we are again, God, with all that makes us who we are, all that fills our lives, carrying into this place of joy and freedom the burdens we just can't seem to lay down, the weight of all the scores we long to settle, the justice we want to demand for the wrongs we have suffered. Yet we also know that we would happen, that what would happen if you were to deal with us justly, with our greeds and violences, our betrayals and lusts. If justice was served in our lives, we, would, we could not stand. So in this morning, forgive us our wrongs, God. Forgive us as we do not deserve. Forgive us against the demands of justice. And forgive our obsession that justice be done to those who have wronged us. And may our worship lead us to this place, where our hunger for grace and mercy may be filled, and where we may be free from the tyranny of vengeance. Amen.
as we have music for reflection that allows you to ponder upon what is it you might be giving to God. And giving doesn't necessarily mean it has to be done today. It can be whatever kind of responses that come our way throughout the week as well. Giving is worship. Let us ponder these things in this time. Scripture for the morning will come from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Hear these words. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. With thankful hearts, offer up your prayers and requests to God. Then because you belong to Christ Jesus, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and feel. That we be blessed in the reading of these words from Paul's letter to the church of Philippi. We'll enter into a morning prayer time and we'll give you an opportunity. I think we missed it some. But some folks might have something to share. Is there a joy or concern that you might have this morning? I'll share one joy that Friday was a wonderful day for sure guys. We celebrated our 27th wedding anniversary, so we got to celebrate at the beach, which was kind of fun. So we, and, and Larry's over being, being smart again. I hear you over there. So. And we want to thank you for the time that we've had and some experiences we've had the past couple of weeks. It was a joy to be at my home church. One Sunday, we shared a different kind of homecoming where we sp I spoke on Saturday night versus Sunday morning, but it was a lot of fun being in their sort of their amphitheater they built there. And so hopefully we got to say, see it. Some technology difficulties created uh, a, 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 this opportunity, I guess we'd say, for those on YouTube. I think it, should, it was shared on Facebook, but I couldn't get it to post to YouTube for that, but just passing the idea. But did anyone else have something to share in this morning? Let us enter into a time of prayer. 
God, in this morning, we do thank you so much for this opportunity to be with one another in this place as well as in our virtual community where folks are at their laptops or cell phones or even maybe they've got plugged into their TV so that they might watch this worship together and be a part of this community in this day. You have shared with, the, with us before that where two or three are gathered, uh, you were in the midst of us all. And that gathering can be, whether it's in person or whether it's in spirit, uh, visually, uh, together, virtually, that we are together and we are gathered here. And you are among us in this place. And for that, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for who you are, Jesus, and the work that you have done and that you continue to do, not only in our lives, but in the life of the church. The church that is just feeling the unusualness of this time that we are in where um, folks are still debating on whether they should come in or stay away for just the time period. And we know that there are those who are missing out on the opportunity that they can have to be with one another, to experience the relationships, the community that we have here in this place, the connectedness. But we pray that in our own special ways that we have been able to connect, whether it's through uh, watching in our virtual community, whether it is through texts or phone calls, emails, letters, whatever it might be, cards that can be sent. We pray that we're still connecting with one another and allowing one another to feel the love and the presence that this church might show to, uh, to those especially that aren't able to watch our service because they don't have the means of technology that others do have. And we give thanks to those that have invited folks into a, a spread out situation, even in, the, in their home or whether it's a gazebo, whether it might be sitting on the front porch or whatever, especially in these days that are still somewhat warm. Uh, and we thank you for that because that is somewhat of a ministry in itself whether it's family or friends. So we give thanks for those folks. And may God, you bless them for the work that they continue to do. We thank you for all that you have continued to be and all that you do. And we thank you for the place that we do have to worship. And we thank you for those gathered here today. And may we be blessed too. God, we also just thank you for um, birthdays and anniversaries. We thank you for healing and progressive healing that people are experiencing, whether it's through a year anniversary of a, of a major surgery or through a couple of surgeries that, that people have been through and they're still rehabbing and getting better. For just getting back into church and experiencing what faith can be and, and a renewal of faith, we give you thanks, God. And we just continue to be with those that are experiencing that, that in their lives and we just uh, ask that you bless and guide and, um, and teach in the midst of these days. We lift up those that might be sick in this morning. We're experiencing um, illness. It could be flu. It could be this uh, other flu that's coming around. And You know, just things that are happening, in God, we just pray that you be with each folks, each of these folks, and just help them to feel better, but also just know your presence is there with them. For those who are in the hospital, for those that we say are continuing to rehab, for those in this day who are experiencing grief because of, uh, of a previous death or one that's just happened, or even those that are, are in the midst of that um, um, impending, um, we, we ask that you just give comfort and peace to each of those. For those that are experiencing the difficulty of what it means to be in the nursing home in these days. And the missingness, missing the families as they, they miss the touch and the, uh, uh, the, the usual conversations without barriers at times. God, it's just so much to deal with these days. And we just ask you to continue to bless us and just be with us in the time that we can have with one another. And just continue to carry us forth in these particular days that we have. But just continue to bless this church and the ministries here. And bless us in all that we do. For it is in the name of Christ that we pray. Amen. I'd like to offer you these words for meditation this morning. But we also have to uh, start with just a little something funny. Jill's here. So we have to 
have some enjoyment of laughter. And these days, these unusual days, laughter becomes very important, does it not? The title of this is Flowers Wrongly Sent. A businessman ordered flowers to be sent to the opening of his friend's new branch office. When the businessman got there, he was shocked to see the flowers with the inscription, Rest in Peace. <laughs> he was so outraged that he stopped at the florist to complain. It could be worse, the florist said. Just think someone was buried beneath the floral arrangements with the inscription, Congratulations on your new location. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I think that would be difficult, is it not? <laughs> it was difficult this week to kind of ponder upon what we would share today because uh, my mind was elsewhere and my body was too. As we were recuperating, or not recuperating, I guess, but just sort of refreshing our own lives this past week, um, being away for some, uh, for some time of Interaction at the beach, I guess you'd say, as we had some family together, and uh, we just kind of enjoyed ourselves. But a few days, you know, you had a couple of days where it was so nice you would walk along the beach a little bit, but there were a couple of days, mornings, that I took a walk on the, the, the regular road there and discovered it was just a couple of miles I was getting to walk. I felt good. It's good to be away, you know, but yet still get some of that. And so part of the time, I would put my little earbuds in and listen to the music as I would walk down the road. And, if you know me, I have a mixture, an eclectic uh, mixture of music on my um, uh, iPhone. Uh, I will tell you, some folks, that there is no country on there because I don't <laughs> listen to that. Uh -huh. There's a lot of hard rock and nice rock, no bluegrass either. No. I only play good music. <laughs> and there's some good Christian music on it too. And I was listening to and one song came up that I haven't heard for a little while, and I had to play it again because I really liked the words to it. And I, they have a good meaning to them, especially when I thought about the scripture that we're doing this morning, when it talks about worry. Because I know it's been a while since we focused on that, because in this day and time that we live in, we, we have a lot of fears and worries, don't we? That we're inundated with seeing one another and going into places with masks, and we try to sort of keep a little bit of distance between us and other people at times. And you walk into the store and it has the little uh, the little bowls in the floor that say uh, say six feet between. And you know, at Costco you go in and you wait for a minute and the person tells you which I ought to go into. And it's just different in these days. And it's and while we do have some fears and worries, there shouldn't be the fears and worries, especially for us who follow Jesus Christ, right? It's because he is the one who helps us to, to not have that worry. We, we've shared that scripture before where Jesus talks about, you know, that let me be the yoke. Come and rest in me. Jesus talks about worry uh, uh, many times, especially with his disciples, who he says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, he says. The song I was listening to was a song by a group called Love and the Outcome. And it's called The God I Know. It's a great song. And I would love to play it for you, but Facebook will kick me off a little bit because you can't do copyrighted music and you do it and do it live on Facebook. So we can't do this. So if you have a chance, maybe what I'll do is I'll post it sometime this week and you can, can listen to it a little bit. But it has some wonderful words to it. It starts off and it says that if, if if it was all about religion, what, what to do, what to say, what to wear on a Sunday, all about perfection, black and white, wrong or right, never gray, well, I'd never make it. I'd never be good enough. And isn't that right? If it was about perfection, we would never be good enough, would we? Because who is perfect? I'm waiting for somebody to raise their hand to say, I'm not good enough. <laughs> yeah. Only Jesus Christ is perfect, isn't he? How many of us mess up on a daily basis? How many of us worry a lot? How many of us have life of fear? Maybe we don't have a fear. 
I don't want to say fear in the midst that we're so scared we just can't do everything. But a fear could be that that we just, it, it's, a, it's an extreme worry at times. And I would suspect that there are folks out there who do still have that in their daily life. But this all begins in that way to say that we have to be careful about our own perfection because we don't have it. And if we did, we'd never be good enough. It says, I'll try to walk the line, pray that I will find something that I knew was real, begin to realize the harder I tried, the colder I'd start to feel until the moment I second, the second I met your love. And this is what I like. I like the chorus because it says this. It says, and then I threw my hands up, worries down. I remember when he showed me how to break up with my doubt. I threw my hands up, worries down. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to me? It means I throw my hands up in prayer. That I reach up to the sky, that I reach up to Christ, and I said everything that can be hard, everything that can be worrisome, everything that can be doubtful, all these things are in my life, my unfaithfulness, whatever it might be. I throw my hands in the air, and I pray that you will just rescue me in these days. I pray that you will walk with me in these days. I pray that you will be with me in the midst of everything and everything I go through. And when we do, what happens? Do you ever feel that weight just come off of you after a prayerful moment? After just a release of those things in your own daily walk? Yeah. To say to God, I have messed up. To God, I, I, I'm worried about what it means to step out of my door sometimes. And that doesn't just mean because of COVID. That means because of there could be somebody out there. There could be uh, a day that we just walk and we trip. There could be a day that we have an auto accident. There could be all these things that happen in our lives, can it not? And we can just inundate ourselves or fill ourselves with worry and fear every day, could we not? Just walking out the door. But when we have God, when we have Jesus in our life, throw your hands up and allow your worries to go down. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. No strings attached when he saved my soul. I want you to know the God I know. You've got to know the God I know. We all know that God, don't we? The God that has saved us, that has said, you know, you, I don't care what you have done in your life. You can always come to me. You can always come back to me. I'm always reminded of the story of the prodigal son. Eh, it's always that cliche scripture we use quite a bit. But it's one of the most powerful scriptures that's out there, isn't it? About the love of a father for his son that's emblematic of Jesus, or of God and us, of Jesus and us, is it not? That the prodigal son who said, Dad, I want everything that is mine. I'm going away. I'm leaving. I want to be out of here with you. In the midst of it, he squanders, he lives life for a little bit, he kind of has that moment, doesn't he? But then realizes where he needs to be, and that's home. And he comes back, and he's going, you know, I'm going to go home, and they're, 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 they're not going to want me there, and I'll, I'll sit down, at least give me a job with all the other guys that's out there. I'll just be one of them for a while. But what does the dad do? Dad's always there for us. Mom's always there for us. Parents are always there for us. God is there for us, is he not? Hands up. Worries down. Because of what God has done for us. Scripture is so full of those hands up moments. This prodigal son from said, I'm just going to go and do whatever he wants me to do. I may not even be able to call him dad anymore. But it's a much better place than I've been at. And you notice his worries did go down some because he did go to the bar. Not knowing what was going to happen. And it was better than he thought. 
He's more than just a rescue. That's where it starts. Not where it ends, but freedom ends. Not, but it's more than just a story in the sky wearing white. He's alive in every moment. And know that I know this love who is God. And when we do that, I can throw my hands up. Worries down. That's the great thing about God. That's the great thing about this scripture that we have this morning. Paul says, don't worry about anything. It's easier said than done, isn't it? It's easier said than done to not be worried about something. Because we're always going to be worried about something. He says, don't worry about anything. And if you have a, if you have a particular book that you want to continue to read about that, that encourages you, that kind of helps you to de-stress from worry and fear, go to the book of Philippians. Now, that doesn't discount all the other books, but that one is one of those great encouraging books. Because just earlier in, the, in chapter 4 is where he said, Rejoice the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. But here he says, Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. What does that mean? What is everything that we can pray about? Is that anything that we can pray about? And since it's God, it's Paul saying to us that God says, you can pray for anything, for anyone, about anything. It does not matter. It doesn't, ha it doesn't matter if it seems trivial. It doesn't sound mean. It doesn't have to be something that sounds like it's just being just, I don't know. But all I just want something. I think it means that God just wants to hear from us. And it doesn't matter what's on our mind that we share it. And then when we have a fear and a worry in our life, we go to Him and we say, God, help me in this moment. God, something's going on in my life. I don't know how to deal with it. What should I do? God, help me in the midst of my life and everything that's going on in this day. Basically what we're doing is what? Throwing our hands up, bringing our worries down. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. With thankful hearts, offer up, offer up your prayers and requests to God. Then because you belong to Christ Jesus, Paul says, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand, and this peace will control the way you think and feel. Basically, what it's saying again is, hands up, and the second part is going, worries down. God will bless you with peace. A peace that you don't understand, but a peace that will control the way you think and the way that you feel. You want peace in your life? Pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. And God will give you peace. That peace is basically him saying, worries down. And this day, be mindful of those things as you go from this place as we continue to spend time in a different way anymore. For some time, we don't know how long this will last. We don't know how long it will be before people feel completely comfortable about rejoining us in the midst of this place. But for the moment, let us continue to put our worries down. Let us continue to raise our hands to God and say, God, I love you. God, I may have worries and fears, but I'm lifting them up to you. I'm giving them over to you. And I know that through you, peace will abound in my life today. As you wait for this week to continue to progress, till we meet again, be mindful of those words once more. Put my hands up. Not my worries to go down. Try that in this week. See what happens. See how that peace might rush through you. Like the water of a waterfall that cleanses everything that's underneath it. And roads and, and wears away. May the peace of God continue to wear and erode those worries in your life so that there's nothing left but just that peace that God might offer to you. What wonderful grace we have for God.
And may we be blessed through that grace that he gives to us. Let us share in our closing hymn this morning. And be mindful of these words, as you have been forgiven, now go into the world that needs your forgiving, healing touch, and also the release of worry. Bring peace and hope to others, sharing his God love with them. Amen. Mm -hmm.